On this channel, we've talked a ton about how to set up your drum set and get it feeling right for you. And today we're gonna to put together another main component, which is the placement of your cymbals. This has been by far the most requested topic I've had on this channel, so I'm really excited to get to it. But at the same time, I'm a little hesitant because the placement of your cymbals and what constitutes a good setup can be really, really subjective, and it can vary a lot player to player. That said, it should be fairly easy to get your cymbals in a great place for you. You just have to be really clear about how you want to use your cymbals and follow a couple of easy concepts. So let's get into it. The first thing to consider is how you're going to use each cymbal. If you think about any one cymbal in your kit, think about how many times you're going to play that cymbal. Literally, how many notes are you going to play on any given practice session or gig? And then think about, are you going to want to access it with both hands? For example, if you play jazz, you're probably going to use your main ride cymbal for thousands and thousands of notes in any given gig. But maybe that cool little splash cymbal you bought, you might only play that once or twice. Also, for me, that main ride cymbal is mainly going to be played with my right hand. I might not even touch it with my left hand on a lot of songs, so even though I want it closer to the cymbal because I am going to play it a lot, it doesn't necessarily have to be right in the middle. As another example, if you consider the snare drum to be the center of your drum kit, then that left side crash is actually pretty close to the center of the drum kit. For that reason, I actually consider that crash that's on the left of my drum kit to be my main crash because I'm gonna use it a ton with both hands. I'm also gonna make sure that that cymbal that I know I'm gonna use just all the time is gonna be my favorite sounding crash, so I don't even think about it when I play it. I just, I know it's gonna serve the music. These days I am playing mostly jazz, so that main crash is also gonna serve as a secondary ride cymbal at low volumes. Like I said before, for the same reason, I also try to keep my main ride cymbal as close to the center line of the kit as I reasonably can. If I'm playing a four-piece kit, or maybe I have my toms off to the left, I usually place the ride cymbal right in that spot where the second tom would normally go. This is a really common setup, and you'll see it this way for a lot of really great drummers. But let's say you're playing two rack toms in those traditional five-piece setups, then you just move the ride cymbal down over the floor tom, right? Actually, for me, that's a no. I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with putting your ride cymbal down over the floor tom. If you do that, it works for you, that's awesome. But hear me out. Putting the ride cymbal over the floor tom, it just moves my arm that much further away from the center of the kit, and it's a little bit outside my comfortable, natural range of motion. So over the course of a gig, it's gonna put extra pressure and stress on my elbow, my shoulder, and my upper back. It also lowers the ride cymbal enough that it makes it harder to crash without really flattening out the angle, and that's gonna also affect when I'm playing on the flat of the cymbal or trying to get a bell sound. So if I keep that ride cymbal in the space between the second and third toms, I can have just a little bit better access to all of the sounds that are available on my ride cymbal. That position is also gonna keep that cymbal just a little bit better in my line of sight. And I know that's a small issue. It doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal, but it does make a difference for me. It helps me to have it in my line of sight so that I can get exactly where I wanna play on the flat of the cymbal or on the bell or on the edge or even an overtone now and then. I do think the little things like that'll make a difference for you. So a lot of drummers will have a secondary crash cymbal in that position between the second and third toms. So I'm essentially just swapping those two. So if you think of the two crashes and the ride cymbal like a line, the ride cymbal is in the middle and the crashes are on the sides. This is also a super common configuration and I think it's a great setup to start from to add more cymbals. Before we move on to the next concept, I just wanna clarify, I don't necessarily mean that you should move cymbals to the outside of your setup just because they don't get played very much. I actually have a killer little splash cymbal that I play like two notes per gig but it lives right in the middle of my setup because there's space for it there and it doesn't really get in the way of anything else. My point is that I want to prioritize the cymbals that I play the most and the ones that I want to be able to access with both hands by trying to get them as close to the center of the setup as possible. I mentioned this just a second ago, but I want to make sure my cymbals are in a position so that I can get as many of the available sounds as possible from every one of the cymbals on my setup. For me, those sounds are going to be flat, bell, edge, like in a crash, and then occasionally some overtones. In the jazz idiom, I wanna be able to draw on as many sounds and voices and colors as I can, and my cymbals naturally offer so much diversity. So I don't wanna limit what I can do with them by placing them at an awkward angle or height. 
In another video, I talked about how to set up your toms, and a very similar concept applies to the symbols, and that is that the angle and the height of the symbol are gonna be linked together. So usually, the higher the symbol gets, the steeper the angle is gonna be, and the lower the symbol gets, the flatter the angle is gonna be. In fact, if you check out the drum kits of players like Daru Jones or Annika Nillis, you'll see that some of their symbols are so low, the angles are actually negative. They're tilting away from them as the player. And in almost every one of these setups, these players are still prioritizing getting the tone and the playability out of the symbols that they want. I won't argue that some of it is probably for looks, but I'd be willing to bet they are not sacrificing their ease of play and their flow and the sound just for a visual effect. It's much more likely that they've experimented enough and they're pushing their own personal envelope enough that their symbols are just ending up in kind of an unusual spot because that's where they've evolved to as a player and as a musician. One more tip is to make sure that the tilter of the symbol is angled so that when you adjust the tilter, it's always tilting toward you as a player or away from you as a player and not off to one side or the other. One more concept you're gonna to wanna to consider is the reach and the distance that each symbol creates for you. This includes both lateral, so side to side motion, and also height. The closer your cymbals and drums are together, the more easily you'll be able to move from one instrument to the other and get all the sounds you want, creating a more natural and smoother flow around the drum kit. There is a point of diminishing return on this though. Sometimes you can get stuff too close together and too close to you. The most obvious example for this is when a cymbal covers up too much of the surface of the drum. So as you are moving stuff around, Try to make sure that there's a really clear path for your stick for every instrument that's on your kit. Also, consider your comfortable range of motion. If you have to reach too far to get to something or if you have to reach too high to get to something, especially if it's a repetitive motion, lots of notes, you're gonna create additional strain and discomfort in your joints and over time that can do some damage. It will also affect your playing, I mean from just slowing you down to making things awkward. Again, you want things to be as smooth and connected as they can be. I've also had the experience of having a symbol too close to me to be comfortable. In the case I'm thinking of, it was a crash symbol. And even though there was plenty of room to bring that symbol in close to my body, it was just too close. It didn't feel comfortable at all. And so actually, as I moved it out away from me, it put it in a position where it felt a lot more natural and I was able to get a better sound a lot easier. One quick note about hi-hats. In another video, I talked about pedal placement. And that's gonna largely determine how far away that symbol is from you and how far it is off the center line of your kit. But you should definitely experiment with the height of your hi-hat symbols to make sure the relationship between those symbols and your snare drum is comfortable for you. And also that you can get all those sounds from your hi-hats. You definitely wanna be able to get edge sounds and flat sounds and bell sounds. And again, I can't stress it enough. It should be easy and comfortable to get all of the sounds that you wanna get. You shouldn't have to lift your shoulders or reach too hard. Make sure that it feels good while you play. Once you've got things where you think you want them, the next step is really just to play a lot and don't be afraid to move things around. It can be super easy to move things where you want them, even if it's just a fraction of an inch. One quick tip to make these adjustments easier is when you set up your cymbal stands, face all the wing nuts, the adjustment screws, toward you as the player so that you're not awkwardly reaching around the cymbal stand to try and move something around. Sometimes even a really small tweak can be the difference between awkward and awesome. At the end of the day, how you place your cymbals is gonna be highly individual and it's gonna be up to you. There is a lot of value in checking out the kits of players that you like and professional players, but it's gotta work for you. It's gotta feel the way you want it to feel, it's gotta flow the way you want it to flow, it's gotta look the way you want it to look. And I always say, make sure it protects your body as well. Keep it in those comfortable ranges of motion. If you wanna know how to get the very most out of your cymbal stands and keep them functioning well for a long, long time, check out this next video. If you've got any other tips that I missed or things that you think have worked really well for you, please put them in the comments. We can all benefit from your experience. Sincerely, thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you on the next one. You're probably gonna play your main Ryan, oh my gosh, your main Ryan cymbal from the Rhine in Deutschland.